Hi, I'm Stephen McGill. I'm a neurosurgeon at Northwestern Medicine. Pituitary tumors are typically detected if a patient is symptomatic or as an incidental finding on a scan. It's very common to have a cyst in the pituitary or a small lesion that may be a tumor or may not that doesn't cause any symptoms that's found on a scan for other reasons. For patients who are symptomatic, there are generally two types of symptoms pituitary tumors can cause, which reflects what pituitary tumors are and their biology. One section of pituitary tumors is called a functional tumor. Those tumors secrete hormones, and so you can have symptoms from too much hormone secretion. The other type of pituitary tumor are those that don't secrete hormones. We call them non-functional tumors. Those produce symptoms that are caused by mass effect or compression of the surrounding structures or hypopituitary function. So the pituitary gland is surrounded with the optic chiasm above it, the cavernous sinus with the nerves that control our eyes on either side, and then the pituitary gland itself in the cella. So patients can present kind of either way, too much hormone, too little hormone, or compression of the structures around it, most commonly peripheral vision loss in both peripheral vision fields. The first line therapy for any adenoma is determined by the type of tumor it is. If it's a functional tumor, and if it's one that makes prolactin, then we can treat it with medications that pr reduce the production of prolactin. And those can have dramatic effects, shrinking the tumor and providing wonderful outcomes for patients. That's a small subset of tumors. So then the, next, the first line of therapy for patients who don't have a functional tumor that makes prolactin really depends on what the symptoms are for the patient. If, this, if the patient is asymptomatic, then we begin with observation. If a patient is symptomatic, then typically surgery is indicated. Even if, it is, if it's a functional tumor that's not secreting prolactin but secreting growth hormone or too much steroids, which causes Cushing's disease and devastating changes throughout the body, um, those are treated surgically. If it's a non-functioning tumor that's compressing the optic nerves or uh, causing hypopituitarism and it's larger, then those are treated with surgery. So a small number of these patients will have a recurrence. There also can be patients where due, due to adherence to the optic nerves or invasion of the cavernous sinus, or a challenging anatomy of the tumor, there's a small residual left. Then the question is, what do you do at the time of recurrence or progression of a residual? That is a nuanced decision that's made for each patient. But in general, if it's something that we can go back in and resect surgically, that typically is the best option. So if it's not in a good place to get surgically, or there's a lot of scar tissue, then in those cases we can, we'll start with radiosurgery. And this targeted radiation is very effective at controlling the tumor, it has fairly low rates of hypopituitarism or decreased pituitary function. In rare cases or actually in, in cases where there's functional tumors like patients with Cushing's disease where you have too much steroid, sometimes the consequences of having too much steroids or too much growth hormone are so bad to the rest of the body that then it's worth radiating. So in those cases then once you've done everything you can surgically, Radiation is often an excellent option at per giving the patient the best chance to get those hormone levels under control. One of the things that makes it, our care here at Northwestern unique is our multidisciplinary approach. We have experts in rhinology, in endocrinology, neuroendocrinology, and neurosurgery. And our goal is to provide the best possible care for any patient with a pituitary tumor. To do that, though, is really facilitated if we can work closely with endocrinologists, ophthalmologists, uh, and people who care for patients near where they live. And when I think about where is progress really going to be made in pituitary and what are the things on the horizon that will help patients with pituitary tumors, the biggest need in my mind is is optimizing function for patients who have functional tumors and optimizing hormonal control for those patients. And the future and the exciting developments in pituitary are the development of medical therapies that can treat these, the disease to mask the effect of too much hormones or targeted therapies with radio tracers or targeted molecular therapies to treat pituitary tumors and in particular the functional tumors. I think that's an area of emerging research that um, we will hope to be a part of and will really benefit patients in the future.